All right, this is a unit four or unit five, day four B. So yesterday we did the double angle. Today we're going to do half angle identities. Um, kind of the same reason as yesterday. Um, you know, if you don't have a calculator on you, but um, you know you, you have a certain uh, angle. You know, if you have half of half or double of a um, of a reference angle, you can use these. You know, the double and the half angle identities. So uh, not going to do a whole lot. I think here it is, and <laughs> these are it. Um, you know, if you've got u divided by 2, then you can plug that u in there, and you see the plus and the minus. Um, so on these these top ones up here, you do have to think about uh, what quadrant yours is in, the, the specific one you're doing. So it could be positive or it could be negative, um, again, depending on what quadrant it's in. So you have to do give a little bit of thought about that um, first, and then um, just plug it in, basically, and simplify. So um, evaluating number one, evaluate the following using half angle. So Right now I'm thinking I want to do sine 15. So that angle right there is in the first quadrant. So I'm just thinking first quadrant. So whenever I'm done, this should be, you think sine is your y coordinate when the first quadrant, y is positive. So I, it's going to be positive when I'm done. You know, I think through, you know, if you just want to do these while we're doing it, um, 75 is also the first quadrant. And your x coordinate um, would also be positive. So this one, I want the positive version of it. And then for tangent, well, you only need to worry about it if you're using the first one for these guys um, because you're using cosine, cosine and sine and dividing. Um, the sine will actually take care of itself. It, it, it will, whatever quadrant it's in, it'll be correct for tangent if you're using one of these. This one only uses cosine, so you have to you know, figure it out for yourself. But since it has both of them as dividing, um, it'll, it'll work it out on its own. Um, so... Um, uh, pi over 12, you know, pi over 12 is also in the first quadrant, it's 15. You have to take 180 divided by 12 is 15, so that's the first quadrant. So if I end up um, using uh, this first one up here, you know, you're using cosines here, uh, plus the tangent ratio, the cosine and the sine positive, so tangent should also be positive. So I'm going to be using the positive root on all those. So it's about as basic as it looks. You're going to think of this as sine 30 over 2, so u is 30. So your u equals the 30 here. So I'm plugging this in. Again, we're going to do the positive one. 1 minus cosine 30 divided by 2. And uh, so this would be the square root of 1 minus. Now the, the cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2. We'll divide all that by 2. Again, to, just to simplify this, if I... The, the largest denominator I see is 2, so I'm going to double everything. If I double all three of these, um, it'll be the same ratio. So this would be 2 minus radical 3 over 4. It looks weird to have a radical under a radical, but that is acceptable. So we're, we're okay with that. Um, cosine, this guy up here, cosine 75. Think of that as um, the same thing as cosine 150 uh, divided by 2. So 150 is your u. You know, why, why 150? Well, 150 is 30 degrees less than 180, which means the reference angle. So if I drew that triangle, 150 would be in the second quadrant. I don't care about that because, you know, for the positive negative, this is the first quadrant. But the reason why 150 is nice because it does make a reference triangle that I can, I don't need a calculator for. So um, this is going to be the positive uh, square root of 1 plus, and it's going to be cosine of 150 over 2. And the, uh, the cosine of 150, one, it's actually cosine 150 would be um, negative, negative radical 3 over 2 over 2. Again, double everything just so there's no fractions within fractions. So this would be 2 minus radical 3 over 4. And then tangent, you can think of this as tangent pi over 6 divided by 2. And uh, you know, pi over 6 is your 30, your equal 30 degrees. So that is your u. Okay, I'm just going to convert it to degrees. So I think it's easier to do degrees. So this would be, um, so depending on which one I want to use, you know, maybe I'll use this one. I like to use one of these if I can. Now, if you're, if you're doing some sort of... Um, trying to prove an identity and you don't want, you just want one, you know, with the same function, you know, cosine, cosine, you want to have everything in terms of cosine, you could do that, but I 
these are just easier to use. There's no square root to worry about. Um, so 1 minus cosine 30 over sine 30. And, um, and this would be 1 minus the cosine 30 would be radical 3 over 2. The sine of 30 is a half. Um, we're going to double everything because I see a denominator of 2, so double everything. You get 2 minus radical 3 over 1, so I'll just leave it as 2 minus radical 3. Um, number 2, and we're giving you a specific situation here. We're in quadrant 4. We're both, I'll just draw in the middle here. So we're in quadrant 4. The opposite over the hypotenuse to the opposite side, so I'm going down 7. I have a hypotenuse of 25. Now you can do Pythagorean triple or Pythagorean theorem, um, whichever one you want to do. This is 24. So 7, 24, 25, and that's positive. So now if I want to find, um, and this is theta, so this is theta in here. So if I want to find the cosine of theta over 2, I need to do the, and this is, so theta over 2, this is going to be in the, uh, it have to be the second quadrant, right? Because the if this is in the fourth quadrant, the absolute most it could be was a little bit less than 360. So if you cut that in half, you'd be over here, it's going to be a little bit less than 180. If it were so very close to the edge here that it's almost um, 270, um, cut that in half and it would be somewhere over here. So it's going to be somewhere in this range. So it has to be in the second quadrant. If it's in the second quadrant, cosine's negative. So I'm going to do the negative square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. Um, so see negative square root 1 plus and the um, the cosine ratio, so it'd be adjacent over hypotenuse is 24 over 25 uh, over 2. Now the, the biggest um, the biggest denominator see is 25, so I'll multiply everything by 25. So negative square root would be 25 plus 24 over 50 the negative square root of, so I'll do this, I'm going to split them up too. So 50 on bottom, 49 on top. So that'd be negative 7 on top. And 50 would be 5 radical 2. And if I rationalize that, so it'd be negative 7 radical 2 over, um, let's see, 5 times 2, so it'd be 10. If I rationalize it all out. Uh, using the same triangle, so tangent of theta over 2. Um, I don't have to worry about the sign on this one. I'm going to use one of these two, just so I don't have to worry about the sign. But it would be um, the tangent ratio, if it's in the second quadrant, quadrant would be a negative. Negative over a positive, so it would be negative. But that's only if I'm doing this one. I have to worry about that. But um, I'm going to do 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta. So 1 minus 24 over 25, and the sine is opposite of hypotenuse, that'd be negative 7 over 25. No, this is going to become negative in the end, which I said it should be negative, yeah, but here I don't have to check it, it took care of itself. Take everything times 25, so 25 minus 24 over negative 7, uh, so it'd be a negative 1 7th. You're all done. Number 3, prove, uh, prove this using the um, half angle. So tangent, which I'm going to use, oh, let's see, I think because cosecant, because I got options, which three I want to use. So cosecant is 1 over sine x. And I'd love to cancel out that sine on bottom if I can, so I'm going to use the one that has sine on top. So I'm going to do sine x over 1 plus cosine x. And then these will cancel. So we got 1 over 1 plus cosine x, which is actually what I'm trying to verify. So that one actually went a lot easier than I thought it would. Um, the next one here, I don't really have options for these guys. They, they are what they have to be. So I'm going to say square root of 1 minus cosine x over 2 times, and this one is 1 plus, 1 plus cosine x over 2 all over. And... over sine x, and then if I multiply these together, think of that, that would be under one radical, so one big radical would be 
1 minus cosine times 1 plus cosine. So it would be 1 minus cosine squared x over 4 over sine x. And notice 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. We're going to use our Pythagorean identity. So this would be sine squared x over 4 over sine x. And if I square root that top, well now I'm looking at um, plus minus because it's I'm square rooting. Also, this was plus minus, that was plus minus. So any combination of multiplying is going to result in plus minus. Um, so this would be plus minus, and it would be sine x over 2, all that divided by sine x. And I'll think of that as over 1, and flip it over. So this would be 1 over sine x when I flip and multiply. So it would be plus minus a half. So it's going to be positive half or negative a half when you're all, all said and done. <clears throat> okay, back side. We've got these, um, we've got some more things. This is it, though. This is the rest of it. This is called power reducing identities. These are, if, if you have something squared and you need to get rid of the square and you want to reduce it down to a first power, these are the ones to use. Okay, so, and just memorize them, use them. You're going to have your formula sheet. I guess you don't have to memorize them, you just have to know how to use them. So you have this formula sheet you're going to be using um, anyway. So just know how to use them, basically. You know, kind of look at them, look at the patterns. Um, these aren't used as much, but they're, they're out there. So prove each identity. So looking at this guy, I would, it would be, if that's a 1, I'd love to get step this sine squared down to a, something to the first power instead. Um, so I've got cosine x plus, and then sine squared u. Okay, sine squared u would be, so i got this 2 hanging out front here. So that would be 1 minus um, cosine 2 times, and this, my u is x over 2, so I'm going to have x over 2, which eventually is going to be just x, and then over 2, which this 2 will cancel that out too, okay? And I want to check, does that equal 1? So i got cosine x plus 1, and then plus negative, so it'd be minus cosine x when all that's said and done, and that does in fact equal 1. So that one works. <clears throat> now this one here, uh, there's not really one for stepping down from fourth powers, so I gotta think of this, this looks like um, the difference of two squares. So I'm gonna think of this as cosine squared x plus sine squared x times cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And um, if I'd step all of these down along the way here, so cosine squared is this guy, so I'm going to write that down in its spot. So 1 plus cosine 2u over 2 plus 1 minus cosine 2u over 2 times, same thing, cosine 2u over 2 minus 1 minus cosine 2u over 2. And whenever I'm adding these negatives here, they wipe out. So you got 1 plus 1 over 2, so that would be 2 over 2, which is just going to be 1. Over here, I am, let's see, 1 minus 1 would be gone, but I got cosine 2u minus negative, so that would be a plus, so it would be 2 cosine 2u. This is over 2 equals, and so this is a 1, and this is a 1. So and I have u's here, I'm sorry, when I plug them in, I change the x's to u's. Let me switch all these to x's because I want to show that it verify that it equals that. Okay, now last one here. Um, I'm just going to throw this out. I made an error. So equals, equals, so let's just throw that out for the sake of time, too. We're getting a long video, so um, that was a typing error. So here I got sine x over 2. So I'm going to use my, um, my half angle here. So I'm going to say this is the square root of 1 minus cosine x over 2 plus cosine x. So when does that equal 0? Uh, bring this to the other side. So this would be square root of 1 minus cosine x over 2 equals cosine x. I'm going to square both sides to get rid of that square root. It would be 1 minus cosine x over 2 equals cosine squared x. And if I to get rid of that 2, I'm going to double everything. So if I double the left side, it would be 1 minus cosine x. If I double this side, it would be 2 cosine squared x. Get everything on one side. So 0 equals 2 cosine squared x. Bring the cosine over, so plus cosine x minus 1. And when I want to factor that guy, 
I was going to use this area here. It's going to be two and one. Their product is negative one, so one one's plus, one's minus. And if I want a positive in the middle, this one's got to be positive. So that would be the yeah, that'd be the correct factoring. So cosine x equals a positive one over two, or cosine x equals negative one. And um, when does cosine x equal a half? So that would be over half up, over half up, or down. So that would, this would be a let's see, 60 degree angle, so it'd be pi over 6, and then it's going to be pi over 6 short of doing a full circle. So it'd be, uh, I'm sorry, pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, because pi over 6 is 30. So it'd be pi over 3, and then pi over 3 short. Over here, when does cosine equal negative 1? So it's going to be over here at pi. And then if you wanted to add the plus 2 pi's to find all 2 pi n to find all of them, um, that would work. So anyway, hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.